Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. This is episode 98. You follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Special guest in the building. This is a Philly support, Philly situation. Introduce yourself to the audience. Hey, this is your man, Sheed, man. One part of the jewels. Yeah, Robbie Kahn. You know, I'm present. And together we to the point, you know what I mean? To Copy the point let's, podcast. Let's start off properly. Sound like them, fellas. What is Sam Talah? What's up, man? All right, now let's hit the rundown. Up, March 12th. Martin, I'm about to hit the rundown. Let's go. It's work time, baby. March 12th, How to Hustle Live Show. March 12th at the barn, 4901 Catherine Street. Get your tickets now. You can hit the link in my bio and get the tickets. You can scan the QR code if you find a poster around town, or you can get with me and I'll slide up on you with the physical tickets. Tickets is $15. We're looking to see you there. You got no reason to not be in the building. How to Hustle Live Show, March 12th, 7 o'clock. Doors is at 6. The show starts at 7 o'clock, whether you're there or not. Shout out to Sipping with Sammy Podcast. Sam and Saab will be in the building. And shout out to Simply the Shea Catering, one of the sponsors, and Cloud 10 Treats, one of the sponsors. Now, eBlock Radio Network, every Monday at 2 o'clock on the eBlock Radio Network, the exclusive home of the video of the How to Hustle Podcast for Hank. Every Tuesday, 2 o'clock, GFT Radio Network. Uh, Wednesday, 216 to Blend, 12 midnight, 8 a.m., 8 p.m. I say podcast radio network every Friday at 10 a.m. I skip Thursday. WTNUPhilly.com. Philly support Philly. Every t- every Thursday at 12:30. Saturday, THC Media at 10 a.m. Sunday still wide open. Looking to make that happen. Shouts out to my guys. Me and Oak been locked in. For, me and Oak been. Me and she been locked in for years. Yes, sir. <laughs> we talking back and forth on Instagram and ain't even know it was each other. But yeah, so- yeah. I, I would, you know. Cause I was a little like, you know, like I'm gonna say this here, right? OG, right? So sometimes, you know, you be watching your step on them Jones. You, you know what I mean? Hey, that's me all day long. I be playing around with, with that time. social media. You be watching your step, but right, people, right, right. When I people hit me out, all the time. Like, Damn, this my folks, man. People hit me all the time and be like, "Can I get on the podcast?" I'm like, "Send me your link." If I ain't already listening to your show, I can't just. You know what I'm saying that's what's up. I appreciate you listening. We appreciate the five stars because we only accept five stars. Right. But, um, I got to do my homework on you before we just get you on. You know what I'm oh, saying? Cool. <laughs> and cool. when I seen the joint, and somebody sent me, I'm like, "Damn, I ain't no uncle had a joint." Then I'm mm-hmm. on the page and I'm like, I don't even know if this is him before I just throw the greetings. Then he said something. <laughs> I said, right. "Hold up, we wrong for not having the greetings in it." So now, straight to the point. Got him on. Let's get straight to the point. Right. We're gonna talk about this is uh episode 98. We all almost there to 100. Almost there, y'all. Now we let the guests go first here on the how to hustle podcast. What is your toxic trait? Give me mm. some jewels, Sneak. Uh mm-hmm. what go first kind of what? Yeah, I can go all I can attack that. You said toxic trait. Yes, what is I your got, toxic trait? Yeah, I got a couple of them joints off the top. I can go to uh <laughs> uh toxic for me is uh my relationship with gambling, right? I have a, I have a, a, a negative relationship that I always thought was a positive relationship. Because as a young man, that was the way of me earning money. But a lot of negative things came behind that way of earning money. So it became toxic because over the years, it became like a, a crutch. I would lean on that. But it led me to doing other things. I wasn't being responsible. I was robbing Peter to pay Paul. Uh, well, holding yourself accountable in the situation. But the, right. this is be- this is beautiful that the recognition is there. This is why we're doing this episode. This is about us recognizing a flaw that we have in ourselves. Oh right. yeah, I like the question because the question is about cleansing yourself, right? Copy that. You know, you, know, you have to be true with self first. Especially when you realize there's a problem going on. You know, if you look in the this is one of my joints I always throw at people. If you look in the mirror and make a bad assessment of yourself, then how you gonna keep it real with me? I can't look in the mirror and tell you I'm a 5'11, 180 pound nigga. It's not the truth. Right. (laughs) You know, and uh, that's that's one, uh, I like to call it uh, a negative 
life vites that I was embarking on at a certain period of time. Uh, then another joint I had, I believe, uh, hold myself accountable for this too, is early on in life, I had a poor choice of woman, right? And that was all on me. You know what I'm right. saying that decision was all mine. Let me ask Ooh. you, what was what what was? Oh, you liked them toxic, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's what I was getting ready to say. Was it was it that you was uh intrigued by the chaos uh, that type of woman or? All uh, right, check it out. Right, all uh, right, check. It. We can peel the onions, onion peel back a little bit. Right. But if we be honest, right? If everybody be honest, a lot of our women. And I love my black women. They have a, a disposition coming out the gate. You know, we put a lot of pressure on our black women. Right. You know, so when we go back in and we're not being, at the time, I wasn't being 100%, right. but I'm expecting them to be 100%. And I'm bringing my bull crap to it. And they bringing bull crap to it. So it was a bad, it was a bad mixture. That's where the toxic come in at. Yeah, it Ooh. wasn't just it wasn't just all of them. Remember what I said? I was or oh, I didn't say it. But what I'm saying is I mean the bad twisted woman, I always was the common denominator. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Always, all right. I was always in the picture. Some kind of way I was always in. It wasn't the same woman every time. Right. You know what I'm saying so two I so, so it so so it seemed like you talking in two tongues to me, right? So I want to no. key into the explain one. Good, explain it's, to it's seeming like you saying you had a bad choice of woman, right? But then you excuse you're excusing away they're bad. No, no, I'm uh, saying uh, they uh, had to be hard on them, they had locked the they no. had the deck stacked against them. No, that's not that's not an excuse. That's the okay. reality of the situation. You know what I'm saying it's not an excuse. So what made it a bad choice? Because me, you know, when I figured me out, then I made the proper choice and it's been successful for the last uh hold on one second. The reflection of that situation is what he talked right. about. At that time, he ain't know they was bad choices. He was just okay. going through them different things. Even yeah. at the time, like I just talked about this on last right? week episode. Uh, you got money, right? You don't even know I'm what you're putting on a certain person store. at a certain time. Mute your camera. All right, you don't even, you don't even know at that time what you're putting on what because you're only 19, because you're only 20. Yeah, you're my, fault, uh, my bad. So you don't even understand the situation that you're putting them in. They got all these hard and different situations from dealing in situations where he also took the accountability in the beginning, saying I wasn't ready and I wasn't right for that situation. Got you, got you. So no, no, that's how no, they no. get in those situations because you got joints that get raised in chaos, so all they gonna know is chaos. That's what they think. That's love what I'm saying. Like. That's what I'm saying. So, uh, so like the bottom line is when I really realized that my picks was this was my picks. And I told my homie already, but uh, I'm gonna I'm a pull you up what I'm talking about. I was always looking for the five, three, a lot of back pockets, lot, big back pockets. I want girls right. with big back pocket, little waistline, <laughs> and she can be heavy up top, you know what I mean? See, that's the problem though, you can't, you can't that, come in with the preconceived notions of this is what it's going to look like. That was right. the problem because when I would land them type joints, they brought a lot of bull crap with them. Then the bull crap I'm bringing was the, I told you already, I'm gambling, I'm in the street, I'm doing my diddy bop, and I'm in the casino when they open every day, every night, all night. I'm in the banger, banger joint, my neck. My man named the banger banger joint. I'm in the banger banger joint from the time sunrise, the sunset, and I had the choice of them type women. So it was always a TNT explosion. You can't never get the positive situation out of all negative situations. So then I reversed my whole game, right? Check out what I did. I reversed my whole game and I went and got a woman that was totally 
always mature. Something I never got before, right? I got a totally mature woman that made me meet her maturity. You right. know what I'm saying? I didn't want to blow me. She's younger than me. I didn't want to blow by me. Because I'm picking her up. I'm giving her the game, but she taking it and she is selling with it. She she making strides. So I got to keep right. up. So that was the difference. You know what I mean? Gotcha. But give me yours, though. Give me one of y'all. Yeah, damn, uh, I just say, let, let's get back on the topic now. Go ahead. Get, drop us some jewels now. My, my John, you, you, you ready for me? Yeah, come on. Give me your toxic traits. All right, I'm going to say this here, toxic traits, right? One of the most toxic traits. When you speak about toxic, right, I got to speak in the past tense with it, right? Because it was at a point in time in my transition that I made a conscious effort to eradicate a lot of the, the toxic things about me. Okay. So everything I'm speaking on now is going to be in the past tense. And I'm not saying I'm perfect. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that the things that was blatantly black and white toxic that I could put my finger on about me, I put a conscious effort into changing already, right? So one of the joins was this. When I was growing up, I had a vicious... I had a temper problem. I had an anger problem, a temper joint, right? And I think it came from a conglomerate of things, right? I know it came from a conglomerate of things. First off, right, I grew up in a rough neighborhood, right? Every man figure that was around me was the, the, uh, you know, gangster chronicle boy. They wear they wearing the weapons, they 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 chest poked out, they got they got reputations. You know, my family members, they got reputations in the neighborhood for being, you know, no pushover dudes, you know what I mean? Goofball dudes. And I'm the I'm the young one of the youngest coming up looking at all this, right? So that's the first thing I had examples. The examples I had was teaching me to be, right? Then I come outside, I had, I was short, I was slim, I was light skinned, curly head. So I had like the Napoleon, pretty boy, all them type <laughs> ketchups mm -hmm. that I was carrying too. That would make me go on a beam <laughs> soon as I think somebody is challenging any of that. You get what I'm saying? Cause you feel like you gotta live up to the expectations of the of the whole situation. Exactly. So I had a I had a thing where and it ran on my family it was a hair trigger, a hair trigger temper that I would jump to like wow, blink in my eye as soon as I feel is a word said or a gesture or any type of thing to violate, I'm all I'm all over it, right? And it wasn't until I learned, right, that that was toxic and that it had to be eradicated for the sake of longevity. If you want to live and you want to be around and you want to be, you know, you know, you want to be free of that you, kind of element. If you want to mature, if you want to evolve, if you want to turn exactly. into something else, you want to break that train. This is why I always tell people, I just said this again on last week's episode. Shout out to my man, Bell, on episode 97. It's bad right. old heads. It's bad examples. It's yep. bad ways of seeing that this is what things are supposed to look like. So if you got a toxic dad or some toxic uncles and this is who's bringing you up, then that's what you're going to think. This is how I'm supposed to be. If you got somebody who abused your mom, you're going to think you're supposed to hit her. If you got a mom that got hit and she made excuses for it, you're going to think that you're supposed to get hit because that's how he's going to show that he loved me. And them situations could be bad all around depending on whether and it's the male or the female and what you pull. After a while. Them things you'll I think have to leave over and over and over again, you'll believe them the, to be normality. But the thing is, it is normal to you, but you don't understand at that time that it ain't normal. It's your normal. It's what you grew up with. Right. So it's what you think that everybody joint look like. If your lights is always off, then you go, everybody lights probably off. If your lights never been off and you go over your cousins, you go, why are your lights off? Like, what tip is this on? Like, my man, we grew up together. They water was off. And in my head, 
our water ain't off. Nigga, come take a shower at my house. We got towels and water. Come on. Because right. it wasn't normal for me to see why is the water off. But we kids and don't understand what these situations is. But that's all about the perspective and the seat that you were in. You know what I'm saying? What did exactly. you get and how did it look for you? Yup. But, it, it, you know, it wasn't until, like like you said, the key word matured into understanding that that reaction was a weakness. Mm -hmm. And the strength lies in self-control. You get what I'm saying? And, Being and mature me and my man was just talking about this, right? A lot of people these days get a lot of passes from me, right? And some of them, they don't know me personally, so they may not know that they get in the past. They probably think they on top. They chump me. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, hey, yeah, you know. And you say, go ahead, you got it, baby. Walk it off. Some people can smell. They know what type of dude they can smell around and say, dude, ain't no nut. So I know he giving me a pass. You get what I'm saying? Evil way is about with me now, I feel empowered. I feel empowered now when I don't let a dude trick me out my spot, man. <laughs> Cause it can happen just like this, yo. But that whole thing be weak. Like we just was talking about this before the show started. Act right. off emotion. Act off emotion ain't never a good joint. Because how many niggas yeah. that you know niggas is doing life because they said, fuck it. That's well, what I'm mad. saying. I was mad or I said, fuck it. You're going to be mad every day. Something ain't going to go your way every day. Somebody going to cut you off in traffic. Your girl ate the last sausage for breakfast. Like, kids <laughs> did something. Something is going to always make you mad. And if you go right. acting on the emotions of I was mad and I was frustrated, then that's a flaw in you. That's a that's toxic That's what I'm you. saying. Bob. You got to work on that. And you got to recognize that this is a situation that I can't be in because this is going to fuck up my whole situation. Like you said, I can't let this get me out my spot. This might yeah. fuck it up now. Well, my kids something. got another nigga in the crib. Y'all right. saying, saying what I said when I, I, I said it all. Y'all circle back and right back to that. Right. It comes back home to the toxic that's in you despite what is being transmitted to or from. You got to eradicate the toxicity that's inside of you first. You got to eradicate it but because you, know, you got to recognize right. that it's in there. That's you, you ain't going to listen to somebody else giving it to you. That's how you know it's the toxic trait is once you go, oh, shit, I really did that. I said that. That was me. That was the character right. that I had. Now watch this weird, right? I'm You're telling right? you if we telling you. Now, dig this weird, right? I was telling she the other day, right, Hank? I was telling she the other day, right, that I'm going to do something right now, right? And it's toxic. And I have to, for real, for real, really dig deep and ask for some help from a lot because I done had a, it ain't great. I got a black cloud over me, man. You understand what I'm saying? Right. And what happens is a lot of life experiences, bad ones on top of bad ones, then a disaster. You might get a little good one to come in between there, but ain't really nothing to pull you back past the bad, bad disaster. So when you go out on everyday shit, like you said somebody cut you off in traffic, right? Cut me off in traffic, I'm on you. Joke is bitter. I'm on Run around bitter from, from, from circum some situations. I get it. This is also this is right. also the joke. This is also the problem that we always be having. Yeah, and that's that's with me. So see how she's they got an anger problem. He had to recognize it. Mm. What I told him, what I'm telling you today is, I'm recognizing it. You know what I'm saying? Right. Now, I'm recognizing it. Now I got to confront it. You know yep. I'm saying? In the confrontation, sometimes it's just what it is. It's a confrontation. Yep. So I have to feel empowered when I beat myself by not reacting to that boy cut me off in traffic. 
I beat yep. myself up. I don't got beat both with words. I can beat myself up, man. Let that man that dude go by with that, man. He hit the car. Your car cool, ain't it? You know yep. what I'm saying? And That'll be right always. That this is always the joint that always messes us up is acceptance of our situation. Right. Uh, You get a situation because you can handle it. I don't get that situation because I can't handle it. You get the situation, like you said, I don't know what it is. We ain't even got to go there because you don't give up too much of your information on these podcasts. You don't know who listening. <laughs> um, right. Where you got tragedy after tragedy after tragedy and then, damn, we get a good day or two and then, damn, something else happened. You got right. the situations because you can handle them. It's just all in how you look at them and how you handle them. What's your temperament on them? Do you keep yourself structured? Do you keep yourself saying, like, I got this because I can deal with this? Or do you just go, oh, my God, what was me? How the fuck did this happen? Right. And that's, again, all of that is about you doing that work on yourself and you looking at yourself and figuring right. out what that is. Now, right. my joint is I'm a control freak. I got <laughs> it. Okay. I, I describe myself always as a ball dominant guard. I'm at the top of the key. We're going we to run pick and roll. We're going to run ISOs. But I will always, in what this situation, <laughs> I know this. I know, like, I always tell people, my wife is the perfect left tackle. She is there to protect my blind side and get all the shit that I can't see. Right. But I got to get us down the field to score these touchdowns. You know what I mean? I can't block. I can't be over here setting the screen. <clears throat> no. I got to be running point on the you situation. You got to be running I, the ball. I will always put everybody in the best position possible. But when I give you the fire bounce pass, just lay the ball up. If yeah. I give you the bounce pass, if I put it right here in the pocket and you fumble it and turn the ball over, don't tell me that you need to get back down the court again because you fucked that up. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> but I you always, looking for the next one to, to give it the pass off. And the, the reason why I always say it's a toxic trait is because it makes my overbearing, it makes you go too hard at all situations. And now all of that is me to the T. Like, right. Uh, and I kind of got that from a man, from Reek. Reek was like, not the oldest, but the oldest. He was the biggest, the big bro from right. our block. So right. he would always have a trait of, if we came together, we all got to leave together. Something happened to one of us, I'm going to feel like it's my fault. All of that's me. I got to go way too hard to make sure that we all good. Which right. is why I said, I got the ball at the top of the key. And I'm going to tell you, you set the screen here. You run back door. You know right. Like I'm going to direct the play and make sure that we good. Right. I got to direct the play. And if I ain't directing the play, now, I'm cool. Now, I tell key in to me time, why you think it's toxic, though. Because all situations can call for you to control them. Right. And if I'm in a situation where I can't control it and I don't like it. <laughs> and right. Like I said, you acceptance in situations, though, because I always give people this. I ain't got no problem talking religion. My mom and my dad took Shahada in the 60s. Lock I came him. out this way. Okay. Right. I've always been this. So I've right. always had the understanding that you get things because you can handle them. And this is why that this From situation is going that's right. here. Yep. Because that's your line. So I give you uh, my brother, Chris, R.P. Mm -hmm. Chris Cotton. Yeah. Talked to Chris' wife the other day, and I told her in a situation where I feel horrible about losing my brother. That been my brother since we was nine. We never had right. one argument in all of the years that we was the best of friends. Right. But I can't overexert myself into her life because I want to be there for her and for his daughter. Right. So that's a situation where I understand that if I come in and do hype, then I'm going to do this and fuck this whole relationship. Up. Right. That's why I said that's the toxic tree. Gotcha. Because you got to recognize that if you come in and you do too much in this situation that you can't control. Right. You got to understand that the faith base of that situation tells me that you got this because right. you can handle it. But right. also understand that you can't attack this like you would attack any uh, every situation that you right. do in your life. So in essence, so in essence, you got a you got a positive, you know what I mean, that could turn negative based on if you don't control it, yeah. Yeah, the, the extent of your uh the extent of your uh investment in it or your over investment, or you can you could it can Man. be it when it get overboard, that's when it get toxic, or or you know that. When you can't, when you know you can't do that, what you want to do is toxic to you. I can't yeah, leave because this I, right. Because you, all of them joints, you ain't going to be able to leave. You can't control every situation. And I feel like right. if we in a situation and I can't control it, then I don't even want to be in a situation. This is a bad situation. Right. 
because I don't think that we're going to get the best of outcomes. I don't think that we're right. going to get the best of results. Because like I said, Hurry up, it's I'm, not, I'm not controlling the situation from a selfish standpoint. Right. The way that I'm looking at it is I'm trying to do what's best for all of us. And, right. and if I put us in those positions, then I feel like I'm putting you in that position because it's the best position for you. This is the way for you to succeed, for you to get the best of results. And for right. me to get the best of results of what, what I'm yeah. doing, yeah. But it ain't all about just I want to be in charge just to say I'm in charge. Like, nah, it ain't that at all. Which is what most people will be doing in them situations. Ooh, ooh, yeah. Right. My John, it's, it's funny you pointed that out, right? Because um ooh, yeah. I'm a pretty uh I'm pretty aggressive with uh I'm almost wear the same skin, right? Oh, mute your camera, oh. Huh? Yeah, we filming. Yeah, mute your joint, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. You Listen. said you got the same situation. Yeah, I, I feel like um, huh? only difference is I huh? think um, some of those instances had already backfired on me. And it humbled me to an extent to say I'm not going to always try to play that Lane, I'm going to pick my spots. I'm going to pick my spots. See, the funny part about you saying that is, like you stated in the beginning, you was one of the youngest. I was right. either the youngest or second youngest. Because all my friends, everybody was always older than me. Right. And I try to learn from the mistakes that everybody's making. Pay attention to the shit that's going on around you. Don't just be sitting here every day and you don't know what the hell is going on. So when I look at these situations and I say, okay, being too emotional in that situation didn't work out for him. Being too open to this chick didn't work out for him. Acting off his emotions just put him in a bad situation. Paying attention to all of those different things. Like Uncle said, nah, this one is gambling every day. This one's getting high every day. This one, like paying attention to all of the different traits and all the different things from everybody. You're going to pick and choose the things that work and that don't work from everybody, but you just got to be paying attention to the fact that if it didn't work for you, I ain't special. It ain't going to work for me. You know what I'm saying? Right. You won't keep banging your head up against the wall. Why the hell am I then going to go, oh, look, I got this new technique. If I bang it sideways, you're going to get a concussion <laughs> just like you did. Right. You, know but you most still banging your head. You still banging your head. Most people won't right. think they special when they got a whole new way of doing it. it ain't the way that that thing work out. No. Just pay attention to the things that's around you. I believe, Which is, again, that's I believe, always I believe, the old heads. I believe growth. I believe all growth. You know, when, when we when we talking uh, as it relates to toxic things, we should be talking in the sense of like I like I pulled like we both brought to the forefront all three of us eradicating those things, right? Or at least uh, refining them if it is a something of, something of a positive can, yeah. trait that can get negative and get toxic. You get what I'm saying? Because leadership yeah, it, is not a toxic thing. You get what I'm saying? Hello? Leadership ain't what dictatorship is. You know what I'm right. saying? But if, that, you're that'll come if you're a leader who can't listen. is not refining it, right? But yes, yeah, so if you're a leader who can't listen, then you're not a leader. you just bossy. There you go. You know what I'm a leader understands when to drive the car and when to be in the passenger seat. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> The leader right. understands the strong suits and the weak suits of this whole, or the whole team and the whole situation. Phil Jackson ain't going to call ISO for Steve Kerr at the top of the key because he know that's not his strong suit. That's right. what makes you a good leader. You always put everybody in the best positions, whether those are positions or something that's going to be good for you and beneficial for you or not, because it's not all about you if you're going to lead the whole situation. Right. Now, let me ask you this. Is Brian Hart... Is sometimes being a leader, uh, understanding to put somebody else, put different people in positions. Absolutely, because you're not what, trying to be, take every position. You get what I'm saying? The reason why it is is because every situation doesn't call for you. I might right. get a radio station that hits me and say, "Yo, we looking for a podcast that talks on this type of topic." All right, that's not me, but I know who I can get to do that. We looking for right. something funny. All right, I got somebody for you. We looking for sports. All right, I got somebody for you. 
understanding that all the opportunities and things that you get are not always about you. That's the right. stuff that, like I said, that's, lead, to, that's, a, that's, that's leadership. That's leader, though. Exactly. Understanding that everything ain't about you. Understanding that everything is not there for you to try to capitalize on because sometimes the best thing that you can do is just throw the dime. Sometimes you're going to go to the hole and the best thing for you to do is bounce past, get the layup. Yup. <laughs> yup. I always been put in this position. See how y'all was saying y'all been on the uh on the on the far end looking up. Right. I always been the person they looking up to. I always right. been the I'm first out the limo. You know what I mean? I'm a uh, 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 like on every level. I always been first out the limo. I always been some kind of way to to lead. I've been the head. Uh, uh even I'm with my that grandmother's though. tree. Check it out, right? I'm my grandmother's tree. I'm the oldest out of all the brothers and cousins. So everybody looking at me for the the which way to go, which you know how that movie, uh, what's they had when he said if you'd have been a lawyer, all your brothers have been lawyers. Who was that? Uh, mm -hmm. American Gangster, I think it was, with Denzel Washington. Yeah. I was not not on that level, but on that same scope. I had a lot of cousins behind me. Oh, I ain't had nobody look up to, except my older cousins from a different tree. That's what I'm saying. That's what I was about to go to. You had, you got to, it, it's always a line where they looking at you, but you got to be looking at somebody else. And if you, whoever you looking at is what's going to set the example and the template for all of them. Because like you said, if I go the route of lawyer, then everybody going to follow my route of being lawyers. Everybody going to follow this route that I'm going. But if I'm doing this other shit, then everybody going to follow this other shit. It's hard to recognize that in the moment. You it never going to recognize that in the moment when you're 17. Because you don't understand that you got that kind of weight and responsibility. Right, you don't look back I'm at saying. that until you're 30 and go like, damn, they really was They like, watching me. They watching yeah, they me. watching me. Yeah. And watch damn. this. Watch this twist, though. At some point, guys like me and you, huh, right? That was looking up, and I just gave you my examples that I was looking up to, right? When I figured out that those examples in all actuality wasn't shit, man. It wasn't what I what I supposed to have been getting, right? Mm -hmm. And once I figured that out and start to figure out how to be a man on my own, I started to be that leader. Mm -hmm. Even on the young buck tip, the roles start changing with some of my elders, my older brothers. Now I'm, I'm, you know, I'm schooling them now. You get what I'm saying? I get what you're saying. I, oh, I'm the youngest. Y'all never school me on when y'all had the time. I'm the youngest of the grandkids. The oldest of the grandkids calls me for advice. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like I completely get what you're saying. So you yeah. know what I'm saying. But that's why I always said me having a circle of people who were always older than me. It made me look and say pay attention to what's going on like right and try to pick and choose like i said you're gonna take this from him you're gonna take that from him and then like you said if you look around and you don't like nothing that nobody's giving you do you look somewhere else only thing i to, got i'm not i'm not told to know you know like now you say you don't, you don't have no regrets for certain things only thing i learned how to do from looking up at a lot of them dudes was how to how to hustle and how to protect and defend myself. And I carry that shit with me. You know what I mean? I'm cool with having that. But it was a whole lot of missing components to being a man that wasn't being wasn't being given up to me that I had to learn on my own. You feel me? And you it wasn't just gotta... about that on surface shit I was getting. The PG, right? This is a up, hold up. Mm -hmm. This is another thing that you got to recognize, though. Some people don't be equipped for the position. They just in it. You right. Know what I'm Some people just happen to be the oldest. Some people just get thrust into the, the air of responsibility. 
but he ain't even equipped to be that the don't leader. mean they qualify. Yeah, you're not qualified for the position. You just got the position. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's not yours. always yeah. So it's not always about just flat out following whoever is the oldest or Did the you most go? seasoned in the situation. Cause it's all about who is the one that has the traits and the shit that you need to follow. Like you said, the certain things that you picked up that you can take now with you is how to hustle, how to protect. That's great shit to have once you right. get into a as certain a position. And yeah, as a man, and then you got people looking up to you, you need to know how to be able to make this thing happen for more than one way. This is why right. I got all these different shit going on. If I don't hustle podcast ain't making no bread, then we're going to get some custom hustle situations. If that yep. ain't happening, we're going to go to H2H cleaning. We're going to make this shit happen. Yeah, you got to have okay? fishing rods, right? We got to have different poles out here in the water because something going to bite on one of these ends. And if it ain't, guess what? We can hustle the How to Hustle seminars are going on over here too. You know what I'm saying? Make it we're doing the How to Hustle live shows over here because something's going to pop. Learning how to hustle was what I got from all of that. From good being treat. on the block right. every day. It yep. just was, I got, I tell people, I got everything but working. <laughs> you right. know what I'm saying? Because right. all right. I watched, all I watched was hustlers. All I watched was people getting money. It was just where you spending the money, how you prioritizing your situations. That's the stuff. Ahead, I come from a different line and I understand exactly where y'all coming from. I didn't have that element. Look, like I said, in my tree, I'm the oldest. I had right. to look to another family tree for older cousins to try to get some kind of uh, structure, the guidance. Yeah, yeah, guidance, right? Now, out of them two guiders, older cousins I'm talking about, they wasn't protectors, they wasn't gangster. They ain't rumble you. They give you a fair one. All that kind of stuff. But what they was, was they was women getters. Bitch getters. They got them bitches. As my cousins did. They was hole catchers, bottom line. And they threw that shit on. You know what I mean? They was dressers. They dressed. They was fly. And they got women. So I took that then I had my authentic self. See, once you, person gotta know who they really is, man, own self before you really wanna get out here in the work in the work world. Mm -hmm. You wanna get in the workforce, if you don't know who you is as a person, you're not gonna really connect. Tell you, tell you gotta have network, you gotta network. You gotta know who you are as a person to become a good leader. And if you're going to be a follower, right? Everybody younger. You guys are younger. You had looking up the people that, like I was looking over. But if you don't have a good person to follow, you know how young you are. Like I believe you are, and I believe she did. You guys are leaders that's from the back. Yup. You understand what I'm saying? You ever see how a, uh, a, uh, a, uh, a, uh, it's a five alarm fire truck on the road. You got a, a person driving that fire truck in the front, but they got to make a turn doing 50 miles an hour. They got back wheel drivers to turn them back wheels. They leading from the back. And they leading from the back. Right. See, that's you guys. And now watch this here. Then you become a father and a husband those traits you learned that might have been used negatively younger as far as protecting and defending and hustling, mm -hmm. as a father, those traits are definitely needed. Somebody come to your well, house, we got to be the ones that get up front. For sure. You know what I mean? Y'all get out this joint. I got that. For sure. Yeah, if somebody like go, it gotta be me. It can't be one of y'all. Like <laughs> right. That's the problem with these new niggas. These new niggas are sending their chick down steps with the joint. They gonna hide under the bed with the kids. Um, crazy. Crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before we before we wrap up yeah. uh, episode 98, let's talk about y'all real quick. So my listeners is brand new to hearing y'all. Tell them a little bit about what they're gonna get from y'all from straight to the point. 
Hey, listen, man, to the point two six seven, right? We founded this joint, right, me and my guy, because we had this thing, right, that we always done since we first acquainted, right, many, many years ago, right? We always had this thing that we do, <laughs> right? This, this mess, we always get to the point about topics. Whatever the topic is, past, present, future, whatever's going on right now, and we're deeply rooted in to the culture of hip hop because hip hop grew up with us. You know what I'm saying? Hip hop is our youngin, right? So we brought the two together. We said we gonna make we go we should do a talk show because a lot of times this thing we have when we just doing us talking about stuff amongst each other busting it up, getting to the point. We tend to always reel in the audience on an organic tip. Mm -hmm. And people's intrigued about just the interaction. The, 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 way we, the way we touch on topics is a little bit different than the way the average, the formal podcaster or talk show host would do because we got different edges with us. We come from a lot of experience, street, this, that, got a lot of life experiences that we not articulate in a different way to people. And there's an audience, there's a world of people out there that's yearning to hear, you know, from a, a person like us to get to the point about something and not curving and not going here and still not being dancing around it, just not dancing around the situation, yeah, like and you still said. being Getting smart to it. Yeah, but let's get straight to it because some some stones are left unturned because of that element. So we wanted to bring the out the box element to the to the world of podcasts. The guys like us that, like you said, could probably shed some light on some street, some hip hop, some shit that we got a lot of experience on. And the ultimate goal is to help salvage the culture. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So we bringing it like that, man. We we starting back up Monday. This Monday coming, man. What's that? The thirtieth. We be on Monday night, man. Maybe around six, seven o'clock on IG Live to the point two six seven. Tap in, man. We going in on fiftieth anniversary hip hop. You know what it's mean? The round, right? The jewels. Two major components to to the point. And I'm a camera robber, what my man was saying. And uh to you y'all can catch up like this. You have a a mid age, middle age, young swag connected street, professionally orientated, can speak and articulate probably with some higher ups and can reach down and mingle with some of the crabs in the barrel. Yup. We have a way of like he was saying, when we blending and we talking, we don't know nobody's around listening. Somebody's cutting into our conversation. I might be wherever I'm at. I'm on a scepter bus. I'm in the pizza store. Me and my man busting chopping it. And we hit something. Somebody on the background say, oh, I didn't mean you feel like that. I want to chop, 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 chop. And they cutting right in. Yeah. So that's that vibe that we have organically that somebody nicknamed us the boot boys at one time. Because yeah. we give- Jern, tell them who, yeah, Jern was right, the rapper. Right, because right? we give off a, a energy, I believe, that makes people welcome. We welcome people in us almost like. So the capitalize of the whole to the point is just what it is. We strip the fat off the meat and we spit the bones out. Yep. We get to the point. We don't talk around issues. We don't nothing disrespectful. 
we just diving in. And we it get, makes way for good discussion issue. and we good growth and people learn. We drop jewels, we the jewels. Right, right, right. It's what I was saying, right? So, so that's, that's the bottom line or to the point. And like Shake was saying, the 30th, we gonna recap. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we re back at it. We re up. Yeah. We re up. So, this is one of my uh, joints that I always try to say we got a bad narrative in the city that the city don't work together. So, this is what we're definitely trying to do with the different podcasts. Is always, if I know somebody got a podcast, especially if I already know I fuck with you, then let's pull yep. them different situations in. Let's connect those different situations. So, and I appreciate why, you having us too. I want to say that for the record. It, no, it wasn't no question. Once I knew it was you, it wasn't no question. Yeah. You and once saying? I knew it was you, it wasn't no question. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? I I'm appreciate y'all coming. Part of this here too, y'all. I'm, I'm, I'm no, thankful. Nah, man. Well, this man. is this is the first of many. Uh, I appreciate y'all coming on. That's episode 98. Before we close him out, though, you got to tap know. in with us too. Done deal. Uh, I need to say this before we go because I forgot to hit this. H2H Cleaning is my cleaning company. That's H2H Cleaning. On Instagram mm. only, we do roofing, plumbing, HVAC, cleanups, cleanouts, carpet, and flooring. However you need it, we can make it happen. Uh, Custom morning. Hustle World is my clothing line on Instagram. Custom Hustle Co. on Twitter. Custom jerseys, jackets, t-shirts, uh, sweatsuits, football, hockey, baseball, and uh, basketball jerseys. And like the jackets, you design a whole situation yourself. Uh, Hot Hustle Live Show, March 12th, 7 o'clock. Hit the link in my bio. I, I'm, I'm sliding to that too. Yeah, Copy right. I'm, I'm, not, I'm in the Copy building. We'll send you something posted on the page and let niggas know. You know what I'm saying? We yes, appreciate sir. the Please love. do. Right. All right. That's episode 98. Y'all, I appreciate y'all coming on. Sound like him. We're going to tap man. back in. Feel it, feel it.